if I need to push, I do. Okay, all right. Um, we're ready to go. All right, another from Texas. Hi, <laughs> so glad you could be here. I'm so glad you have power. Um, hi, I'm Allie Dazzle. I'm so excited you're here with me today. This is a DIY party mold press class. Um, and I am, uh, well, I work for We Are Member Keepers. I am their social media marketing manager, as well as their, I guess you could call it a brand ambassador. Um, I represent them on um, television spots. I represent them at trade shows. When we're having trade shows, I represent them on the media. Um, so I've been with them for over 10 years now, and it's absolutely the best job ever. I love We Are Member Keepers. They really um, strive for innovation in everything that they create and try to find what's not there in the craft world that crafters would love to have. And that's just always their goal. So it's been so fun to work for them. Um, so um, I am a, a, a resident of Utah. Like I said earlier, I live in Utah, just north of Salt Lake City. Um, I'm married and I have five kids, four of whom are adults and one 11-year-old who's our little caboose. Um, and we have a little Yorkie who's down here on the floor in the craft room with me today. Um, so uh, we are going to be making three different projects with the mold press. So I'm gonna go back behind my desk here, my workspace, so I can show you what we're gonna make. So we're going to use the mold press machine and that's a, a vacuum form machine that allows you to take everyday objects, things that you have in your home and create molds out of them, plastic molds that you can then use to either craft with like a shaker pocket or you can paint them or you can use it as a mold for chocolate making, for candles, for soap, for bath bombs, uh, resin, for all kinds of fun crap. So what we're gonna make today is basically a whole party setup. Um, just so you can see back here, here is my shaker pocket banner. This is my name, Allie, A-L-Y, and there's little shaker pockets on these um, banners here. Um, we're gonna make candles that are custom. This is 47, this is my age. This would be my birthday party. Um, so 47 and then a matching shaker card that says 47 on it. Um, and then also these cute little chocolate um, favors that you could give to guests, which are molded from the letter A for Allie. So that's going to be so fun. So we're going to go ahead and get started. As we go along, I'll give you an opportunity to ask questions. And then again, at the very end, I'll let you have a chance to answer uh, to ask some questions so I can answer any questions that you have. But let's get started. Um, so let's move to the overhead camera if we can. Um, and we're going to make some candles. But first, actually, I just wanted to show you what we're kind of working with today. We're working with, um, whoops, that's not the right one. Oh, actually, yeah, let me show you this. So this is uh, a bulk pack of the plastic sheets that you'll need for mold making. Um, and my phone is crooked. Let me see if I can fix that for you. Sorry about that. There we go, that's better. Okay, um, so, so that's a great thing to have because um, you could just make as many molds as you want. And by the way, these plastic sheets are reusable so you can use them over and over again. Also, they are a number seven recyclable. So you can recycle these if your uh, local program does number seven plastic. Um, here's another thing we're gonna work with. This is the wick candle making kit. So it's got candle um, uh, wax pellets, it's got wick and it's got dyes so that you can um, you know, color your, your wax. So that's what we're gonna work with as well. We're also going to use these uh, sweet tooth fairy meltables. Um, and what I did is I kind of created my own color um, the pink that they have is a little a little different than the pink I wanted. So I used white and red to kind of make my own pink. We're also gonna use these cute little um, flamingo sprinkles from Wilton. Uh, and we're going to use some basic white twine from Recollections. And then these, rec this is a, uh, oh, stickers from Pink Paisley Whimsical Collection. This is the uh, paper pad. This is like shibori kind of dyed uh, papers, which is really fun and really on trend. And then just this big pack of cardstock, we're just going to work with some of this cardstock. So that's what we're working with. Let me scoot that over there. Also, hmm, let's see if I can find it. Oh, yeah. Whoops. So these little um, mini confettis from the Color Pour Resin Collection, um, we're going to use those as well. So we've got lots of fun little bits and pieces that we're gonna work with. All right, so let's get started with the mold press. So I'm just, again, scoot these out of the way. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make a mold. And what I'm gonna make it out of is this uh, foam bath toy. So it's a set of alphabet letters and numbers that your toddler or you know your preschooler can play with in the bathtub and stick them up against the wall. 
these are way old. My kids obviously don't ever use them anymore. So we're gonna make molds out of them. So this is the letter A and we're gonna start with that. And um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on my mold press machine. Um, and let's see. So let me tell you a little bit about this machine. It comes with this magnetic frame. And this frame is where you're gonna place your plastic piece in order to heat it up on the element. The element is at the top of the machine and this just magnetizes up on uh, near the element there to heat and soften the plastic. So that's gonna come in your package. The other item that's gonna come in your package is I think maybe half a dozen sheets of plastic as well as this vacuum attachment. So any vacuum that you have that's between five and 10 amps is gonna work with this as long as it has a round hose. So that's the trick there is you need the round hose. Um, and this will just fit over your attachment and then you can plug it into the machine. Another item that's handy to have, and this doesn't come with it, but it's sold separately at Michael's, is these gloves um, for working with, um, with the heat. They're just kind of protective gloves. Um, and so those are handy to have and I'll show you why in a little bit. Um, not necessary, but like I said, just handy. The other item that's handy to have when you're working with the mold press is some kind of a heat gun. Um, a lot of us have those if you like to do um, embossing, you know, work with embossing powders or, you know, other kind of things. Um, that's, it's handy to have a hair dryer isn't as effective. It just doesn't get quite hot enough. So I, I would recommend using uh, some kind of a heat gun um, for, for the mold press. And that's just to kind of perfect your mold. So you're going to see that in just a minute. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do while this machine is still heating up, and let me get a couple things out of the way here so we've got enough room, is we're gonna get the plastic ready in the mold. So again, magnetic, we're just gonna pull that apart. Um, and let me grab my plastic sheet. Now the plastic sheets come with a film on both sides, a protective film so that they don't get scratched up um, or damaged. So you're just gonna make sure that you peel both of those off from both sides so that your plastic doesn't act funny. It won't work if you have the plastic sheets on. So speaking from experience. All right, so we're gonna place this in here and this frame here has guides um, so that you know exactly where to place that plastic so there's no guesswork involved. And then again, you're just gonna magnetize this, this closed here and it tells you this is the top, the white part is the top blue part is the bottom. So that's another thing I love about We Are Member Keepers is that they make this really easy to use. They kind of think of everything. Um, so real quick, let me kind of show you, it's still warming up a bit. Let me just show you what we're gonna go from. So we're gonna go from, and this is what I love about this machine. We're gonna go from this, right? This little foam piece to this plastic mold. Hopefully you can kind of see that with the letter A to a custom piece of chocolate. I mean, it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. And then I can reuse this. I actually reused mine to make the banner. So you can reuse this for a shaker pocket. You can reuse that for a candle. I would recommend though, if you're going to switch between edible um, molding and non-edible molding to definitely wash it with a little dish soap and warm water in between so that it's nice and clean. And this is food safe plastic. I'm guessing that some of you are probably wondering that this is food grade, so you're fine to use it for food. Um, so, all right, now that we've got this machine, let me just, oh, yep, it's warm. Okay, so let's stick this in and hopefully you can see this a little bit. Let me just pull this over, oops out of shot. Okay, there we go. So you're just going to slide this in until it stops and then go up and it just magnetizes. And you want to make sure that that's right in place, that, that it's against the edges of the posts. Otherwise, you're going to have problems with your heating the plastic. Um, now, let's talk for just a minute about how to tell when this plastic is ready to go. If we could switch to the front camera, that might be a better view for this portion of the class. Awesome. All right. So Again, you wanna make sure that this frame butts up against these two posts right here as you put it in and that it's nice and secure and it magnetizes up there. Um, now, there are um, guides on the inside of these posts, you can't see them probably, but they, that show you measurements. And what you wanna look for is the plastic kind of coming down until it's about one inch, drooping one inch. It sort of starts to bulge and droop down. And when it gets to about one inch, then you're ready to go. The other thing I wanted to point out is this work area right here is five and a half inches. So you need to keep your items 
that you're molding smaller than that. And then the maximum height is gonna be two inches. And there's a two inch guide on this post on the inside. So you can tell if your item is, is uh, too tall or if it's just right. Um, so you wanna keep that in mind. Another thing you wanna keep in mind is that you don't wanna put, if you're, you can mold multiple items at one time, but you don't wanna get them too close because otherwise there won't be a distinction between the two parts. And when you go to pour in your material, it's gonna bleed between the two. So just be sure you've got like a good half inch probably between the items so that there's enough room there for the plastic to mold around in. Um, another thing which I don't have on me, which you can get is um, polymer clay. We sell polymer clay, which is really handy if you're um, trying to use, let's say you have an item that's round um, and if you mold it, the plastic is going to come around the bottom and you won't be able to get your item out after you mold it, right? So you can use the polymer clay to kind of straighten the sides to kind of go around it and form some sides so that when you mold it, it's not um, circular, right? It doesn't go around and cause problems for, for removing it. So that's another handy thing to have when you're working with the mold press. So I'm gonna take a look here and see how the plastic is doing. We are getting pretty close. Um, now, let me give you some times that are handy to have, because I think the trick for success with the, the plastic is the timing for how long you, you let it warm up. Um, I'm letting it warm up just a little bit longer than normal because the machine wasn't quite totally hot. So I would say 10 minutes of warm up time total for the machine and then put your plastic in and um, it'll be ready. It'll be heated up enough to ready, ready to soften it. The other time you need to be aware of is um, if you have items, if you're molding items that are less than half an inch tall, um, you need to keep that softening time once you put your plastic into about a minute and a half, no more. Otherwise you're gonna get wrinkles in your plastic and it might not work as a mold because it'll be defective. So if you're working with an item that's taller than a half inch, I say one minute and 45 seconds to about two minutes, but no more than two minutes. So generally it's a pretty quick um, soften time. It doesn't take very long. Um, and if you let it go too long, you're gonna notice imperfections in your mold. So, and imperfections are okay as long as they don't affect the actual shape that you wanna make. So just FYI. All right, so I'm gonna put my, um, my item here on the workspace and it is definitely ready to go. And I'm gonna turn on my vacuum. I have my vacuum attached to the back. There's a hole in the back and the hose just sticks right in there. And then I'm gonna pull it down and it's going to take the shape of that piece. And then what I'm gonna do, and I'm telling you now because you're not gonna be able to hear me once I turn that vacuum on, I'm gonna use this heat tool to get soften that, re-soften that plastic once it takes the form of the shape and really get it tight around that shape so it's a really nice um, defined mold. Okay, so let's give it a try. Okay, all right, so um, just another piece of information as you're using that heat tool, you don't wanna get it very close to the plastic. I would say, you know, two or three inches at the closest because you do run the risk of um, scorching that plastic with the heat tool because the heat tool gets pretty hot, but it does help to just soften that plastic. And as the vacuum is going, it kind of sucks it on a little bit tighter. So you get that really nice shape. And if I use my heat tool, I like to wait for just a minute to let that plastic kind of cool down before I um, remove the, the item. So let me scoot this over. And if we can go back over to the overhead camera so you can see the mold as I take it out, thank you. All right, so we're gonna remove that plastic and pull that foam out. And that is a perfect mold. Look at that. You can reuse this again, as I said, over and over again. Um, and you can also recycle this. It's a number seven recyclable. Now let's talk just a minute about releases, mold release. So if you are um, like, I've done Rice Krispie treats in here before, just kind of molded them into a shape. Um, if you're gonna use food like that, I would recommend using just cooking spray. It's kind of a mold release if you're concerned about things coming out properly. Um, but if you're doing, the only other mold release that you really need to worry about is um, some, some ceramics. Um, and then uh, like plaster, for example, or concrete, um, which I've done, but you do need to use a mold release, which we, we offer a liquid mold release. 
Um, and, and you would also use that for resin. So if you're doing resin crafts, you're definitely gonna wanna use the liquid mold release. And um, the application of that is really the trick. So you're gonna want to paint that directly into the mold with a paintbrush and let it dry for 15 minutes and then paint another coat, let that dry for 15 and repeat that four or five times. So there's a really nice thick coating in there. And then you're good to go with your um, concrete and plaster and resin. So um, just FYI. All right, so now that we've done that, um, we are going to prepare the chocolates. So what I've done is I've put, uh, this is probably about two thirds of a cup of, of these um, meltables, the white, and then just one red. That's all you need for this. A really light blush pink that we're going to do. And then you're gonna microwave them following the directions on half power for 30 seconds. Um, and then stir and then do, you know, maybe 15 to 30 second increments until you get it just right. If you overheat, you're gonna run into problems. It's not gonna set really nicely and look pretty. So just make sure you follow those directions. So I've got a microwave over here and I'm just gonna get these heated up. Um, we're gonna do the 30 seconds. Oops, sorry, let's try this again. All right, sorry, I'm counting in my head because I think I pushed the wrong button. This is not the microwave I'm used to using. It's one that my husband brought from work. So, cause ours is attached to the, into the, you know, in, embedded in the wall in our kitchen. So, all right, let me grab that and get a look at it. Okay, need a little more time. Okay, we're gonna let that go for a little bit longer. Um, now the fun thing is, let's go ahead and add our um, sprinkled in. You can do this a variety of ways. Um, I like to add these in before I pour the chocolate in and just kind of at the bottom. So I just kind of put them at the bottom um, third of the letter um, and then pour the chocolate over that. And it's kind of fun. Um, so, but you can also add them on afterwards and kind of melt the chocolate a little bit so that they stick on. All right, let's see, I'm gonna give this a little stir. Yeah, we've got a little bit of melting going on. Um, and these, honestly, these are my favorite multiples to work with, the Sweet Tooth Fairy. I feel like they're, they really come out nice and smooth. Um, she has a lot of gorgeous colors to choose from. Um, and they're, again, super easy to work with. So, all right, let's do that for a little bit longer. While that's melting, Allie, do you have time for a question? I would love to take some questions. Sure. Um, so someone asked, um, I got a powder release with mine. What is that used for? Okay, good question. So the powder release is actually used for the items that you're molding. So if I was using some clay, like some polymer clay to mold with, um, I would want to sprinkle a little bit of the powder into the uh, in, over the uh, item, sorry, before melting the plastic on it, just so that it can come out better. So the, the powder is used for the items you're actually molding to, to you know, release them from the mold once you make the mold. So good question. Any other questions while we're melting? All right, this looks good. Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, I was waiting for a few more to come in, but yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, um, right. one person asked, how hard is the plastic? Um, so the plastic is, let's see if I can grab one. It's, it's flexible. I mean, it's, it's, I'm trying to think of what it's comparable to. It's, it's, um, I think it's three milliliters is what I, what I want to say. Um, millimeters, sorry, did I say milliliters, three millimeters. That's what I think it's that, but it's, it's, you know, it's flexible, but it's pretty, it's fairly stiff. So we're not talking like a, you know, a sheet protector for a notebook or anything like that. Not super floppy. So, all right. I think that's pretty ready to go. Let me shut that microwave. Okay. So we're just going to, let me flatten out those sprinkles a little bit. And then we're just going to kind of pour this in on top of the sprinkles and up at the top. A little bit more right there. All right, once you've got that in, 
here's what I like to do. I like to carefully pick it up and kind of tap it down a few times and that sort of helps it to settle and flatten out and smooth out. Up to that one bottom part there, but we'll work with that in a second. All right, so I'm just gonna take a little bit with my stick and kind of fill in down here. All right, and then we're gonna tap that again to get it nice and smooth. And we'll put that aside and let that set. And let me show you um, one of the finished um, ones here and how I wrapped it up. And I'll show you how to do that. And what I did to finish it off is I melted a little bit of white and just kind of drizzled it across the top here. You could also add a little bit of the pink frosting down here once it um, hardens and kind of, you know, place your sprinkles down on there on top if you want to do that. So you've got a little more visibility on those sprinkles. Um, so let me show you how to wrap this. I'm just using a clear cellophane bag that you can get. Michael's has these, other craft stores has these. Um, but they're, you know, you could use treat bags. They've got a ton of options there at Michael's for your baked goods. Um, so hang on, let me just put this in my view so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this really fun punch. I forgot to mention this in the beginning, but this is a We Are Memory Keepers punch. It's called Clear Cut Punch, and this is the tag punch. You can also buy hearts, circles, squares, label shapes, all kinds of fun stuff. Um, the beauty of this is you can punch anywhere on your piece of paper. You don't have to just stick to the edge because it's magnetized. So you place the magnet on top there and then you, this is your guide. So you can kind of move your paper anywhere on the paper and see where you're punching. So that's exactly where you're gonna punch out. And also if you have a pattern on your paper, this is really handy. So you can maybe punch out part of that pattern that you wanna get. Then you're going to place the top on there and that magnetizes down and then you just punch and now I've got two cute little tags here that I can attach to my um, chocolate and I'm going to use a hole punch and just punch a couple little holes up at the top. This is, you can use any hole punch. This is just um, the We Are Member Keepers Crocodile which um, is also available at Michael's and it's a super duper handy thing. This thing can go through like leather and plastic and thin wood and thin tin. It's pretty miraculous. Okay, so we've got holes there. Um, and what I've done is I've cut this um, piece of paper, which is, let me see, four and three quarters inches long and three inches tall. And then I scored it right down the middle and folded it in half. And that is gonna go over the top of our bag. But first I'm gonna punch some holes in it. So I'm, this is the top here where we're gonna insert the chocolate and I'm going to put that over the top and then I'm going to again take this hole punch and punch holes at each end where I'm going to add some twine to tie it shut. So now we're ready to put the chocolate in. Let me grab the chocolate. This one hasn't been drizzled yet but we'll just go ahead and put that in so you can see how it works. Slide that down in there. And then we're gonna place this, actually, I'm gonna use some double-sided tape. So this is double-sided craft tape. You can find this in the paper craft aisle. Um, it's really handy to use. Tombow is a great brand. There's American Crafts brand, lots of different ones that are awesome. Um, and then we just kind of line the holes up and place them right on top of the tape. Oops, got that a little bit crooked. All right, okay, fold that over. And then all we need to do <clears throat> is wrap the twine around it. I'm gonna go front to back. Hang on, there we go. Kind of like threading the needle. All right, each end is gonna go front to back. And then we're gonna go back in and come from back to front through the hole there. Sorry, I gotta like that. I know that's totally unsanitary, so don't do that if you're giving this to someone else. <laughs> Use water, it's not your spit. Okay, put that through and then same thing on this side. I'm gonna put that through, all right. Now, as far as these go, we are going to use these cute stickers to add, um, and we're gonna add, let's see, so the paper, 
pad. There's a paper in that pad. Obviously this was from the pad as well, but there's this particular paper. And here's what I love about papers that have patterns like this is you can use these as embellishments. So I cut out several of these cute little flowers and those are part of my embellishments for these projects. So I'm just gonna take this flower, put a little double-sided tape on the back of it, stick that onto the tag. And then I'm gonna take this sticker place that there and then I'm going to take a little butterfly and just kind of put that right there underneath it and then this one I'm going to put let's see let's do a heart and a star I'll put these just kind of down lower because this is going to kind of sit behind the other tag so I've got those kind of down at the bottom all right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie these once like that. And then I'm going to take this piece here and I'm going to thread that through, sorry, my apologies, through the back of both of these tags, starting with the small one, because that one's going to go behind the other one. All right. Um, oh, really quick, let me point out. So the, the powder mold release that comes with the uh, well, that you can purchase separately from the mold press. Another really handy use for that is in this situation where you've got a sticker that's sticking out and the sticky part is exposed. So you would just add a little bit of that powder mold relief onto the back of the sticker and that will take away the sticky so that you don't have it sticking to other things, um, you know, when you give it to your recipient or when you're creating it or whatever. So, all right, let's thread this through. That does not want to go in. I can tell right now it's going to give me problems. All right, there we go. Okay, so now we're just going to tie these in a bow and then kind of arrange them a little bit. This is just a fun way to, to send this to someone. You don't have to do it this way. You can do it you know, however you want, but I like to incorporate paper. I'm really a paper crafter at heart. So there we go. And then I sort of shift this over to one side pull this other little tag out behind and you can put a little tape there so they stay in place and shift your chocolate over and then you are ready to give that to somebody who needs a little smile or somebody that comes to your party or whatever you want to do or your virtual party <laughs> whatever you want to do your family party okay so let's move on um next we are going to make a candle but before we do actually does anyone have any other questions about this particular project before we move on Yeah, we have uh, another user wanted to know, uh, is there other thickness of plastic that we can get for, I believe, the mold press? Oh, good. Okay, good question. So we do not have any other types of plastic at this point, and we don't recommend using um, other types of plastic. We only recommend using our PETG plastic. It's a specialized plastic that's used just for this type of project. Um, other plastics could ruin your machine and, and you know, void any warranty that you have. So I would I would not recommend using other plastics, but I actually will pass on to our team. You know, if there's enough interest in a thicker kind of plastic, we can play with that as, you know, our product development team and kind of see what we can come up with. So, um, all right, any other questions before we move on? Okay, great. We're gonna go ahead with the candles now. Um, and we're gonna use numbers for this one, 47. Um, for my birthday. So let's see, actually that needs to go down there. Um, and we're going to make some mint green candles. Um, and again, you can do this with anything you want. I've seen this done with, um, with shells. I've seen this done with uh, uh, stars. I've seen this done with, um, what do you call those? Like the little Hot Wheels cards. I've seen this done with uh, all kinds of fun things, unicorn horns. So um, you could really get creative with what you're gonna make. Again, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to make our mold. So we're gonna peel off the plastic coverings, the protective coverings, and stick this in our frame. And using those guides again, super easy to get it exactly where it needs to go. And pop that back on. And I'm gonna bring this machine over. Again, it is now 
fully warm, so this shouldn't take long at all. So I'm gonna slide this in. I'm gonna set my microwave timer. If I can find the timer. Okay. Oh. Okay, kitchen timer, there it is. Sorry, again, I'm not used to this microwave. Okay, got it, 120. Okay, we're gonna let that sit and we're gonna place our items so they're ready to go. Um, and if we can grab the front camera view, um, that, oh, we got it, perfect. Okay, so let's see if I can shift this around a little bit so you can kind of see, maybe this way would be better. There we go. So you can kind of see what I'm doing. I'm placing these right next to each other with a little bit like a half inch of border on the edges and between each other. So they're not too close. And that number seven is crooked. So let me get that straight. All right, and they need, you know, you need to make sure they're kind of even if you're gonna use them together. Um, so what I'm gonna do is after I use this for molding the candles, I'm gonna use it to make the shaker card. So I wanna make sure that my four and my seven are lined up nicely for that shaker card. If you are not using the plastic as a, as a craft, you don't need to really worry about whether things are lined up. You can just place them wherever it's handy to place them. Um, so um, like I have a friend who did some shells and she made candle melts out of the shells and she just placed some cool shells she got from the beach, you know, on there and um, did several molds at one time. So she was able to make multiple candle melts at one time. So that was kind of cool. Um, so let's see where we are. We're... Okay, done. All right, I'm gonna turn this on and make the mold and um, we'll talk when I'm done. <laughs> All right. So again, I'm going to let that sit. Let's go back to the overhead camera, please. Um, so you can see when I bring this out, I'm going to let that sit for a minute. Now you can see there are a couple of little imperfections outside of the molds, and that's not going to affect your uh, molding at all. So, um, but that's the kind of wrinkle I'm talking about. And I think I let that timer go just a little too long because I started getting started. So my advice would be, and I generally do this, um, I generally use my phone, but my phone is being used as a camera right now. Um, but I have my one minute and 30 seconds timer ready to go. And so once I put that in, I just hit start. So it starts immediately. So you don't um, overdo the, the heating on the plastic. All right, so let's pull that out. Um, also, just FYI, there is a Facebook group um, called Mold Press. We are, we are Mold Press or we are Memory Keepers Mold Press on, on Facebook. Um, and the actual um, product development um, member, team member who uh, invented the, the tool, the Mold Press is part of that group. And he shares some really great tips and tricks um, to get, you know, to help you with being successful with the Mold Press. So that's really, if you have the Mold Press worth the time and effort to, to join that group for sure. All right, so that's ready to go. So we're gonna make candles now. I've filled up this um, cup with some of the wax pellets and we're gonna melt those down and then we'll add some color once those are melted down. So let's start with, start with a minute and then we'll see where we're going with that. Um, and the color that I'm gonna do again is gonna be this kind of pretty mint green. Um, and so what I'm gonna do is um, I'm going to use some white because the pellets that I'm using, these end up as clear. This is clear paraffin wax. So you're starting with a transparent palette uh, or transparent canvas. And so you wanna add some white dye. That 
and this may not be the case with all of the wax. I don't, you know, every wax is different, but this particular brand, adding the white kind of gives your colors a little more pop. It sort of creates a white canvas for you to put your colors on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use um, blue and yellow um, and kind of kind of mix those together. And I'm gonna be really careful and really, um, what's the word, conservative with the amount of powder that I'm using. Um, color powder um, so that I don't overdo it because we want to have a nice soft minty green and then I've already cut um, one inch wicks um, maybe they're a little more like more like an inch and a half um, that are ready to go um, so you want to make sure you have your wicks ready all right let me stir that up and that's going to need a little bit more time do we have any questions while we're heating up our uh, candle wax here yeah, so how long does the candy melt product last and can you freeze them to extend the shelf life? You know, that is a good question. I am not an expert on this particular brand of, um, I mean, they're my favorite, but I, I don't represent this company. So I don't have all that information. Um, I, let's see, I'm trying to see if it says anything on here. Oh, do not refrigerate or freeze, store in a cool, dry place. So you don't wanna freeze these melts um, that probably ruins the consistency of them. So, but they do last for quite a while. Like I'm, I'm see, trying to see what the um, expiration date is. Oh my gosh, we're talking a year out at least. So um, you, could, you can keep them for at least a year. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and do another minute on the, um, the wax. Um, and I am gonna show you really quickly so one, one idea, and I didn't actually do this um, for this one, but one thing you can do, let's say you want, take a look at my candles here. So these particular candles are nice because you can just kind of set them in the cake. Let me see if I can move this cake carefully over so you can see. So they're just sitting in the top of the cake and that works fine, but there might be items that you're molding that wouldn't sit necessarily straight up like that. So one thing you can do is you can um, poke a little hole into your um, mold right here, kind of on the side that, that's standing up. And you can poke a, like a toothpick or a skewer, a wood skewer, something that's food grade um, that goes right in there before you pour in your um, candle wax so that you have, you know, some kind of an item to, you know, hold it up. Now, if you're going to do that, you're going to need to cut this mold and that'll you know ruin your mold another way you could do it is as you're molding you could um you know say you take these maybe you're using clay you can poke uh, some kind of a stick in there that so you actually create a stick in the mold the only problem with that is your candle wax is has the potential to go through there so you may want to place your stick back in there so the candle wax doesn't go into it anyway just some ideas about getting these candles to stand up um, for you so they can stick into your cake. All right, we are getting there um, with the candle wax. It's just gonna need another minute. Um, all right, let me let that go for another minute. And that should be good. Okay, so while we're waiting for that, Let's go ahead and um, get started on our, um, our shaker card. So I've already gone ahead and created a mold so we can get started on that and we don't have to wait for the wax. Um, so here's the mold. Now, um, the first thing that you're going to wanna do is you're going to want to take your paper. This is the paper. Let me show you the finished card um, so you can see. So this is the paper that, that we're gonna use on the front of the card. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trace these foam uh, numbers out so that I can cut out that section of the card so it goes over the plastic nicely. So let me pull these all these off so we can get started on that. And there's my craft knife and a pencil. All right, so what I'm gonna do is so that I can get these numbers placed exactly right next to each other is I'm going to put them back into the plastic and then place that on the paper. And that way they are perfectly lined up. So when I place the paper over the plastic, they are just right. So I'm gonna scoop this over just a tad. 
Let's get that up. Okay, so once I've done that, the trick is to carefully pull the plastic off. And then I just hold them down with my fingers so they don't go anywhere. And then I'm just gonna use a pencil and just trace around these numbers directly onto the paper so that we can cut out that exact shape. All right, seven, oops, I almost missed that. There we go. All right, and the four. Again, I've seen some super fun shaker cards this way. Like you, you can do some really fun, creative shaker cards um, with the mold press. So let's put that aside for a minute and we will grab the wax out. Oh, that's looking good. And I'm gonna go grab my glove because that cup is a little hot. All right, let's get that stir stick. Probably need just a bit more time. This is probably a bit more wax than I actually need for the mold. Um, you can probably do like, uh, probably let's see what's this. You could do probably like a third of a cup and you would be fine. I think this is almost a half of a cup. So let's do that one more time. And then we should be good to go. Okay. All right, so now we're gonna take a craft knife and we're gonna cut this out. You can do this with scissors. It's a little harder to be accurate with scissors, but you can do it. Um, so you just kind of, and you're gonna to wanna to have a, a cutting mat underneath to protect your surface. Um, and we're just gonna kind of go around. I'm actually going a little bit outside of that pencil line um, so that there's enough room to fit over the plastic. I might need to redo that. I don't know that I got that quite as far out as I should have, but we can fix what we need to fix. It's better to go smaller and then have to go wider than to go too wide because once you've cut, you cannot put it back. <laughs> so um, err on the side of being a little too small if you're going to um, not get it just right. So, all right, there's our seven. I'm gonna check on this wax, not quite. All right, and let's do the four. Again, just slightly outside of the pencil mark. So it fits nicely. Now I'm doing this a little bit more quickly than I normally would just for time's sake. Normally I would go a little more slowly and really be careful about my curves and everything. But so we can fit all of this fun information in, I'm gonna just kinda do this a little quickly. Okay, let's see how we did. Bring this over here. Okay, it looks like we need just a little bit more space over here. I'm gonna go back in and cut a little bit more out. Whoops. Okay, just a little bit right there. All right, that fits nicely. Okay, let me check on that wax. I think 30 more seconds. There's like two little bits in there. This stuff is a little stubborn today. Okay. So once we've done that, we're gonna cut our plastic down so that it's smaller than this shape. Now, when you cut this, you don't wanna cut too close to the edge of here so that you have space to put your glue down um, so that when you glue it, you know, the paper to the back to hold in your sprinkles, you have enough place for the glue there. So we're just gonna kind of go around this leave, you know, I don't know, maybe a quarter to a half an inch border for the glue. And then we'll check it against the paper and see if we've cut it too wide, which I may have. Yeah, just a little bit over on that side. We need to trim right here. So it doesn't stick out behind the paper. Now let's check that. Perfect, okay, that's ready to go. So let's put that aside. I'm gonna grab my glove again and get that wax out. 
and we're going to make some candles. All right, perfect. Okay, so you can see that's clear. Now we're going to add some white first. And this a little bit goes a long way with this particular dye. Um, that's, we are member keepers for the, the candle making. So you don't need a whole ton of this. And again, that just kind of sets your canvas to a nice white canvas and lightens your colors. Grab that stir stick and mix that white in. You see how that just gives you like a nice white canvas to work with. All right, now we're gonna mix in a little blue. And again, the blue, we're gonna do less than the white for sure, because these colors are pretty saturated. Whoop, my glass is hot. Okay, let me see how that looks. All right, that's good, that's plenty. Okay, now we'll do our yellow. And again, with these dyes, uh, start with less, and then you can always add more, um, but you can't take away color that you've already put in. So just be aware of that. This might end up a little different than what I've got. Well, it's pretty close. Okay. I like that. That's a nice, pretty mint green. One of my favorite colors. All right. So now that we've got that mixed, Make sure you scrape the sides and the bottom, that all the coloring, all the powder gets mixed together. Otherwise you're gonna end up with splotches that you don't wanna see on your candles. All right. Okay, so this is our mold. Let me move this out of the way for just a minute. Um, and let me move my craft knife so I don't poke the top. All right, so what we're gonna do is take the wicks um, and we are going to lay those, make sure they're nice and straight. And we're gonna lay those up at the top here where we want the wicks to be with about halfway. So, so half out and half in the mold. Um, and then you can, you know, right kind of in the middle there. All right, so let me grab my glove and then we'll pour some wax in there. And you can kind of hold your wick down as you're pouring so it doesn't shift when the wax gets in there. A little bit more, cover that up. Just a bit more, okay. And the same thing here. A little bit more. Okay, looking good, that just wants to roll over. Okay, so we're gonna let that sit, but in the meantime, I've got one that I've already finished. That we can just pop out so you can see what that ends up looking like, so fun. Um, and again, you can do any shape, you know, any color, any, you know, whatever you wanna do, totally customizable. That's what I love about the mold press is you can completely customize, personalize, um, your projects. Um, and that just, it just opens up a whole nother world of possibilities for creating. So, all right, let me move this out of the way and um, get some room for this to, to cool down up here. Okay, now we're going to finish up our shaker card. This is super fun. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I am first going to um, cut a piece to kind of cut to uh, be the backing for this, um, for the shaker part. So I'm just gonna use my scissors and it doesn't need to be perfect. Um, it just needs to be again, smaller than the card front so it doesn't stick through. Um, and that's just gonna secure um, the shaker pocket so that the confetti doesn't leak out. Um, and we're actually going to use some really nice and strong glue for this so that it stays nice and secure. All right, let me just um, check with this paper and make sure that doesn't show. Nope, okay, we're good. 
All right, so now we're gonna add our little bits of confetti from this little set from Color Pour uh, Resin. It's got four stackable little jars with the cutest confetti you've ever seen. They're stars hearts, sprinkles, and you know other kinds of sprinkles. They're actually plastic, so they're not edible, um, which is perfect for the card. So we're just, I'm just gonna add a little bit of each into both sides. All right, whoops, that's kind of sticking in there. All right, so got a little bit of static electricity happening here. Okay, and then we'll add a little bit of the hearts. And these are really fun colors that match the um, Shibori paper pad that we're using. So it really looks pretty when you get everything all put together. Let's do the stars, just a little bit of those. Give them some blues and purples. And then our sprinkles. A little bit of those. Okay, lots of fun. All right. So my suggestion as far as filling these up is to do about two thirds to three quarters, depending on how, you know, how much you want in there, how shakeable you want it, that kind of thing. So um, let me just make sure I've got this the right way. All right. So I'm going to take some, this is quick grip glue. So you can use like an E6000 glue, but I recommend a quick dry so you don't have to let it sit for 24 hours or like a super glue that's kind of a quick dry. And you're just going to put it around the border on the plastic directly um, and make sure you get it very close to the edge of that mold shape uh, so that it's nice and tight so your sprinkles don't escape. So that's the idea is just to get it right up against your shape to keep your sprinkles from escaping. And I'm just going to go around and make sure it's totally covered all the way. There aren't any little gaps because your sprinkles might escape through those little gaps and they'll disappear. And that'll be sad because we want to see the happy sprinkles, right? They're so happy. Confetti, all the confetti, right? We love confetti. Okay, a little bit more down here. We'll go around this edge. Um, and you know, just be mindful, follow your directions for the glue that you're using. Some of these glues have some fumes and you want to use them in a well ventilated area. Um, just keep that in mind. Oh, geez. Okay. This is super old glue. Like I would recommend not using glue that's probably expired, but this is just what I had on hand. Okay. So let's put that cap on. I'm going to place this on top. And then I usually just kind of move it around this particular glue. If you wiggle it a little bit, it sticks more quickly. Um, and I think it's pretty much ready to go. That's a pretty quick, pretty quick grip glue. Okay, so next what we're gonna do is we're going to place this onto the plastic. So we need our double-sided tape again. And we're just gonna go around these shapes here so we get a nice secure adhering to the plastic. Whoop. Okay, let's see. I think I need a little bit right there. Yep, okay. All right, so place that on carefully. And then I just kind of follow the shape of the um, mold, the plastic, and make sure it's, it's nice and tight and stuck down really well. And then the next step is to place it on uh, a piece of white. So that's, this is kind of like a mat. Um, so let's see, this is, let's start here. This is a six by six card base. It's from a 12 by 12 sheet. And I just cut it in half and folded it right at the six inch mark. And it opens from the bottom. So that's gonna be our card base. This is a five and three quarters inch square piece that's gonna go on top of the card, just like that with a little teeny border around each side. And then this is five and a half this paper, this pattern paper here that's from the paper pad. All right, just so you know what measurements you're looking at, pretty simple. Um, and a paper trimmer is really handy to get those 
accurate. If you don't have a paper trimmer though, you're okay. Um, you know, let's just add a little bit on the corners here to make sure that doesn't come up. That one's okay. This one could use a little bit right there. All right, we've done that. And now we're just gonna add some double-sided tape about a half inch away from the edges to stick this other part on. And then we just place that on. Now we've got a cute little shaker card. And let me just talk to you for a bit about how I embellished this. Um, and I'll show you, I'm probably not going to take the time to actually go through that because we're just about out of time. But what I did is, is this particular paper, I really like the pink more than anything. So I actually took some pink from this paper, the scraps from this paper that I cut. Um, and I'm just going to, I added those down here, just a little thin strip up at the top to kind of cover up the dark purple. Um, just because I wanted to do that. And then for a little interest, I used this pretty, let's see if I can find it. Is it under here? Yes, okay, there it is. This almost kind of rainbow, um, you know, looks like tie-dye, shibori kind of tie-dye uh, rainbow sheet. And I cut little strips of it. This is like a half inch strip. And I backed it with some white cardstock. And the reason I did that is because these patterns are very bold and, and broad. And so it really helps to kind of break up the colors and distinguish one from the, the one pattern from the other if you use that white border there. So I just, I'm gonna add that there, this one up at the top. And then again, I used this punch and I punched out of white cardstock. Um, and I just kind of uh, collaged uh, some embellishments here. I cut out some pink paper from the flowers and there's a green one and I cut out a green flower there. And these are some of the stickers. And what I did to get the dimension here, if you can see that kind of pops up off the card is I used what are called pop dots or you know foam adhesive um, just to get a little bit of dimension. And the nice thing with that is when you put this um, in a, an envelope, it kind of, it, it, it squishes down. So it's not super bulky. Um, however, with this plastic, with this particular card, you might need to use an envelope and send it as a parcel. Um, and then I added a couple little stickers and some twine at the top there. Um, and so that just kind of completes your card. Um, and you can write your sentiment or your note, personalized note on the inside. Um, so kind of fun. So I think that's it. Now, if we have questions about any of the projects we've done or just about the mold press in general, we want to go back to the front. Yeah, there we go. Um, you're welcome to ask any questions. Okay, does um, We Are Memory Keepers have their own heat gun? We do. We do have a heat gun. Um, it's part of the foil quill line. So um, we, we use it for you know, like embossing, heat embossing with uh, a certain quill. So, but these are also widely available um, at Michael's. There's several different brands and different kinds. Um, so there's a lot of options for heat guns. They're, they're pr a pretty standard crafting tool. Uh, yeah, we have another user that asked, what is the price of the mold press and um, the materials? Um, okay, that is a good question. I don't have my phone on me. I'm not sure um, what the price is right now at Michael's. Um, it's either 99 or 129. I'm not exactly sure. I'm thinking 99. But um, either way, it's a great investment because you can, again, reuse those molds over and over again. Um, the plastic sheets, I want to say retail for just under a dollar a piece. And let me tell you why that is a benefit, because you, if you were to go, if you go to the craft store and you buy a, say, a silicone mold for chocolate making, you're going to spend five to ten dollars um, and you're going to be able to reuse that mold over and over again. Correct. But it's going to be what that mold is. You can't change it. Um, but if you spend a dollar on this plastic sheet and you are able to create whatever shape you want, and you can reuse it over and over again and recycle it when you're done with it, 
um, that's a great deal. I think honestly, I would much rather create my own mold and then have exactly what kind of shape I want um, for a buck. So good question. Any other questions? Yeah. Um, do any glues mess up the plastic? I think this was referenced to when you were uh, making the card. Yeah. So this, this particular glue that I use, the quick grip, it, it doesn't uh, like disintegrate the plastic. Um, most uh, permanent adhesives, like a clear permanent adhesive that you would find at the craft store are fine for most plastics. Um, for this PETG plastic, totally fine. They're meant to be used with, with most plastics. Good question. Yeah. Um, and where do you recommend finding basic items to mold? Um, just look around your house. You'd be surprised at what you can find. I know somebody um, used some old door knobs, like um, hardware for a cabinet that was kind of like a vintage style cabinet to mold some really beautiful chocolates for Valentine's Day. Um, trying to think what else. Oh, I've used, my daughter has a little bouncy ball um, that she got from, you know, one of those vending machines and we just, it was rubber and we just cut it in half and we're able to make a snow globe card for the holidays. Um, so that's another fun thing. Head to like a dollar style store, go to the dollar aisles at Michael's and just look for little items that you think have a cool shape um, that you can, can use to make cool things. Um, if you also head to our website, we've got uh, a, like almost a dozen videos for the mold press. There's a whole mold press playlist and there are a lot of fun ideas there. Um, again, with the Hot Wheels cars, with Legos, um, you know, all kinds of fun shells and beads and lots of cool things. So um, I know someone did a, like use one of those old vintage Christmas light bulbs, you know, the giant ones and made a, a Christmas light bulb shaker card. So a lot of fun ways to use it. Any yeah. other questions? Yeah, no, everyone's really excited. A lot of people have said that they're, someone is busy trying to make candles uh, with the mold awesome. press. People are excited <laughs> to, you know, take it out of the box and use it. And uh, someone actually Great. put the price on there. It's a uh, 79.99 on Michael's. So, yeah. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Oh, if you don't have it, go, go grab it now. That's an incredible price for sure. Great. All right. Well, um, if that's all the questions we have, then I think that's it for today. Again, thank you so much for joining me, for spending time with me today. Um, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Stay safe, stay warm, stay healthy, and enjoy creating. And I'll see you next time.